Welcome to Mr. J's SES4U Earth and Space Science video tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to have a look at the olivine liquid or olivine melt phase diagram. This is a binary diagram and it has two axes. It has a temperature axis, so we can see degrees Celsius there, so we have temperature as the vertical axis increasing upwards and we have a compositional axis. This uh, compositional axis has two components, hence the word binary phase diagram. If we start on the left hand side, we have a representation of a pure magnesium rich olivine. And as we move to the right on this axis, we go from 0% iron to 10%, 20%, and so on, all the way to 90% and 100% iron. At the same time that the iron component is increasing in the olivine or the liquid, the magnesium component is decreasing. So this is a compositional axis. And these two curves inside the diagram represent uh, compositions of liquids and solids that would be in equilibrium with one another at any specified temperature. So if we took, for example, uh, 1500 degrees, the lower curve is the crystal or solid composition, then an olivine at that temperature, an equilibrium with the liquid would have this composition, and the liquid would have this composition. So what do I mean by those compositions? Well, if we simply drop a vertical line So I'm going to use a different color here. I'm going to use, um, why don't we use a nice bright blue color. If I start right here and I drop a vertical line down there, then I can read the composition of the olivine off of this axis. So in this case it would have 10, 20, 30, oh a little bit less than 35, say 34 percent, 34 percent iron and then it must have 66 percent magnesium component. So that would be for a uh, crystal of olivine at 1500 degrees Celsius in equilibrium with the liquid. Well what's the liquid composition there? Again we would do the same thing. We just drop a vertical line down until we hit the composition axis and I'm going to use a uh, Oh, let's use a magenta color for the liquid just to illustrate it. So there's the liquid and the liquid would have a composition of 10, 20, oh let's say 22 percent magnesium and 78 percent iron. Okay, so I'm just going to, so this would be the crystal, and this would be the liquid at the same temperature, 1500 degrees. So why don't I just draw a line over there from 1500 just to illustrate that, that we're, we're at one temperature and the crystal uh, is no longer, or not changing its composition at all after a long period of time, and neither is the liquid. Okay, so let's just label uh, the rest of the diagram. Now that this curve here, the top curve, gives the compositions of the liquid. So this is called the liquid composition curve. And the lower curve is called the, well you can probably guess, it's the solid composition curve. Now, uh, the last thing that we need to do is to label what are called the fields of the diagram. And I'll just go to uh, another color, I'll go to green. So we refer to the field above the liquid composition curve as the liquid field and we label that with a L for liquid. And the field that is below 
the solid composition curve, we call that the solid field. And then there's a, um, a region where we can have, as I just illustrated, crystals in equilibrium with liquid, and for that interval we call that the liquid solid field. And we usually label that with a L plus S or uh, an X for a crystal plus S. Okay, well that's an introduction just to the basic components of the diagram, and in the next video we'll look at how we actually um, record a cooling history for a very hot uh, liquid olivine that cools from very high temperatures right down to low temperatures. So that's all for now, and uh, we'll see you next time.